and listen only mode. Hi, and welcome to today's BizKnowledge Digital Marketing Webinar. I'm Mike Moran, founder of BizKnowledge and a senior strategist at Conversion Revealed Context and Solo Segment. I'm the co-author of Search Engine Marketing Inc. and Outside In Marketing and solo author of Do It Wrong Quickly. I'm a veteran of IBM managing groups in IBM.com for eight years and retiring from IBM in 2008 as a distinguished engineer. Today you'll be hearing from Robert Weiss who will present debunking myths around sales videos for business. But before we start, we need to recognize our sponsors. Barn Razors, a full-service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. Gagalam <coughs> empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalam for free today. Garris Corp, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. Multivision Digital. If it's important enough to be on paper, then it should be on video. As we wait for a few more attendees to join, let me review the format of our webinar. Our BizKnowledge webinars last just 30 minutes, so you can easily fit them into your busy schedule. We record each webinar and we'll email you the link later this week. During our speaker's presentation, you can use GoToWebinar to ask a question. That orange arrow opens and closes your controls. If you have a question, simply type it into the box labeled Questions at any time during the event and press the Send button. I'll select a few questions at the end of our webinar and pose them to Robert. We discovered that GoToWebinar doesn't work well for showing videos, but if anyone knows a completely browser-based solution that does, we'd like to hear about it for the future. In the handout section of your control panel, you can find the list of Robert's videos that you can watch later. Today, we'll be using the Twitter hashtag BizNoWebinar in case you share information during the webinar. While we're waiting for the last few attendees to join, I'd like to remind you that the BizKnowledge monthly newsletter and daily articles are available for free at BizKnowledge.com. So if you're not already a subscriber, we hope that you'll sign up now. Thanks again to all of you for spending 30 minutes with us. We know how valuable your time is. So let's introduce today's speaker. Robert Weiss is one of our BizKnowledge authors and is the president of Multivision Digital, a New York-based digital marketing company solely focused on sales and marketing video production and marketing services that drive brand awareness, lead generation, thought leadership, and activity through the sales process. Robert started Multivision Digital five years ago from his 14 plus years of experience in internet marketing, SaaS-based marketing, and sales process tactics. Today, he has produced over 500 business videos for companies as big as Society Generale, Eisner Ampner, and Hearts to start up companies and solo entrepreneurs. So if you've ever struggled with sales videos for your business, this is the webinar for you. Robert, take it away. All right, thank you, Mike. Good morning, everybody. So um, we're going to be pretty quick here. Uh, I saw the list of attendees. I know there's a wide range of experience levels with video. So we hope that you're going to get a lot out of this and have at least one or two takeaways to take back to your organization uh, around some of the myths and, more importantly, why your business should be using online video. So uh, as Mike said, uh, 15 years in digital marketing, I can say that we've done over 500 uh, videos to date, and that really spans the gamut of uh, solo entrepreneurs to, uh, to startups in pretty much every industry. Uh, on a personal level, you see a picture here of my two kids. Uh, I'm a huge hockey fan, ice hockey fan. I play, my kids play. Uh, I'm going up to Montreal this weekend to play in a charity tournament. So if you want to talk hockey, we can talk Stanley Cup. And uh, this is a picture of our new puppy that we just got at Chocolate Lab a couple weeks ago. So let's go back to where kind of online video uh, just began here. And this is an older slide, but really puts things in context right here, where if you draw a line up from 2005, you'll see that most of the web traffic uh, was browsing, right? We were just browsing, we were surfing, but on, if you go up, like you see that little red mark where video is, 2005, if anybody knows what started, what company started, that's a little company called YouTube that started this whole online video craze and really made video uh, part of our daily lives. And today, we're looking at video being part of the pipe uh, 
at about 84%. I think Cisco has changed this to 79% in 2019. Um, we are becoming a society of viewers, not readers. Not to say that we won't read, but we will watch before we start reading. Uh, we will invest a minute and a half to two and a half minutes in a video before we're going to read a white paper or a case study of four or five pages. So um, our personal behavior is driving our business behavior. And if we look at some of the core business tactics of video, uh, you'll see that these are some of the core business tactics that you have every single day of your life if you're a marketer. Uh, if you look at the top of the funnel from brand awareness, uh, lead generation, engagement, education, nurturing as you go down, conversion rates, and then of course, lastly, which is sales, right? Marketers today have the left side of the marketing funnel and the right side of the sales funnel and traditionally have created paper uh, or digital communications, contextual based, to drive those communications. And what we're saying now, uh, if it's on paper, put it on video because video communicates so much more. Uh, it, it educates people more apt to watch and there's a personality of your firm that video can give that just paper and pictures don't. So we want to encourage people to really, really get started with video if you haven't. Uh, because we are still at the early adoption level. I mean, we've been doing this for uh, a little over five years now. We've done 500 videos, uh, but, and there's companies out there uh, that have done thousands of videos, and there's companies that have done none. But still, we're in that early adopter phase of business video. Yes, personal video, we watch Netflix and YouTube and Vine. Uh, it, it's, it's out there pervasive in our lives today. But from a business to business standpoint, um, it's really, really just getting started. So what are some of the myths out there? Well, I think cost is always, always the first one. Uh, people say, well, how much does it cost? How long should it be? What's the best type of video? Um, I only want to do one video there. Uh, what's the best type of content? And then uh, YouTube slash I want a viral video kind of always comes in to play. So let's start attacking these one by one. And the first one is how much does a video cost? And there's a wide range of investments that you could make in a video. Uh, when people are just getting started with video, they try to nail me down on a price. Well, how much is a simple 30 second to a minute video going to cost? And my, my question is, well, do you need a helicopter? And they always laugh. And of course, they don't need a helicopter, but it brings up the point, well, how do I know that you don't need a helicopter because we haven't discussed it uh, to know that we don't need a helicopter or do. So if I give you a price, it's going to be totally inaccurate. So there's five main areas that make up the cost of a video. Uh, and I'll go uh, quickly over these. The pre-production time is everything you do from planning for a video. Uh, do we need to scout locations? Do you need to select actors? Um, how many locations are there? How much equipment is going to be moved from place to place? If there's a lot, well, you need to budget for more. And of course, if there's a little, that's a lot less. Uh, cameras and equipment. Is there lights? Are there blockers? Uh, are there one camera? Are there two cameras? Are there three cameras? How much time are a production company going to be at one location or multiple locations? Is it a half day? Is it a full day? Is it multiple days? Uh, and don't forget about the, the breakdown time and the setup time that a video production company uh, needs to do in order to get set up. So for example, uh, your people might be in front of the camera only for two hours but there's still an hour, sometimes even an hour and a half of setup time with all the lights that need to be done. And then of course, break up, breakdown time. And if you want to have your people shot at two or three different locations at your organization, well, everything needs to be broken down and everything needs to get set up again. Uh, motion graphics, color correction. There's a wide range of 
different types of motions and different styles uh, that you can create from custom graphics to stock graphics and then color correction again do you want color correction or not this fourth piece if you don't want these things you do not need to budget for them but if you do then you're going to have to add more budget to your video production and then of course like anything else in life the experience of your team uh, somebody just out of college is going to probably uh, require a lower investment than a team with 10, 15, 20 years of experience. So the next myth is how long should my video be? Right? And that really goes into, well, what type of video are you producing? Right? If you go back to the, the business objectives, you have the top of the funnel awareness, and you have conversion, and then you have sales videos. Well, somebody that is invested in a sales process that is deeper into the funnel will probably spend two and a half, three, four minutes really absorbing the information from your organization because they are getting closer to a decision about purchasing. Whereas the top of the funnel, from an awareness standpoint, those should be a lot shorter. For example, social videos. If you're trying to drive awareness through social, um, those are 15 and 30 seconds like we've seen across Facebook, YouTube, etc. Um, and then one of the great investments that I see companies make is in FAQ videos. These are great because they're relatively easy to produce. Uh, they can be used in so many different aspects from marketing and from sales. And some answers are answered in 45 seconds. So that particular FAQ is 45 seconds. But if it's an um, answer about a process that might take two and a half, three minutes, well, it's two and a half or three minutes. My golden rule is never make a video longer than it has to be. Stick to one subject, get in, and get out. So the next myth is, well, I only need one video. Can you produce me a video? that tells everything uh, across everything I need to show from, from my products and services to answering questions to showcasing people and that's going to be really really hard to do uh, because it's really not focused on a specific business objective. So when you think about what's the best type of video for your business, I would open that up to say video project because some video projects you will only get one video, but others you get might get multiple videos. So when you think about this project, think about the left-hand side. What is the business objective that you want to attack at that given time? Think about the paper. Think about the email campaigns or other things that you might do, trade shows that you might go to. You're typically investing in one part of that funnel at a time, attacking and then moving on to another part of the funnel. The same methodology, the same approach applies with video. But when you create that specific video project, you can now can utilize that video project in multiple areas of your distribution, right? From sales support to website to blogs and social. Um, so again, when you think about what's the best type of video, forget about video for a second. Second, and let's focus more on the business objective at hand and then how to convert that into video content. Okay, I'm just letting you guys absorb that. So, how do you get the most out of your budget? Right? And this really entails that pre production time that you're going to spend with your video production company. Right? Um, they are, they should be. Uh, experts at how to get the most out of your budget and how to take those different five areas of the, the investment and how to pull one down and push the other one up based upon the objective at hand. I'm going to go just jump back up to this, this previous slide here. Um, let me explain a little bit more about that. A branding and awareness video versus an FAQ video might have a different level of investment where 
the same investment, you can get one branding and awareness video, but might get multiple FAQ videos. So actually this slide right here kind of shows that. So in the three different areas, the three different bars that you have, you have the same exact monetary investment. But the high level production, which might be that branding video, the about us video, that's really going to kind of show the mission and who you, your, your company is, you're going to take all of that budget and invest that into one video. As you go down the funnel, the case studies, yes, they still need to be polished, they need to be professional. So with that same monetary budget, you might get two or three different case study testimonials. And then, again, with that same monetary budget, you can get maybe seven to ten FAQ videos because the production value is going to go down and your video production company is going to take those different levers and pull and push those different levers up and down to make sure the video is appropriate to the objective and then the channel of distribution that you're aiming for. So marketers and business owners are, are really challenged today with creating content. And we know that video can take a lot of time sometimes, and it could be a larger investment than the contextual blog posts that they do or the emails that they do or some of the other investments that they're making. So what we want to suggest is a video first strategy. So you can get the most out of your video investment and then extend that across all the different content opportunities that you have. Because across the funnel, when you add video to a branding and awareness objective for a, an SEO campaign or lead conversion page, uh, email um, marketing communications, when you add video to all those, the metrics just go up a little bit higher. Um, so what we want to say is take this video for a strategy and when you take that video, uh, you, can, can, you can transcribe it uh, into text, maybe tweak a little bit and put that into your web page. Uh, create an email campaign and put that into your campaign. Uh, take screenshots of your video three or four times and write just a little notation of what specific thing is being said at that time in that video and link that social post back to that page or that video on, on YouTube that you might host. So how do we get started here? Well, there's some questions that you can ask your organization. Um, and I won't go through all these because this is in the PowerPoint, but it goes back to the core business objectives. What parts of my business are most confusing, right? Um, the fourth one, what are, com or sorry, the third one, what are common questions that most prospects have? If you're a marketer, ask your salespeople. Say, hey, salesperson, what are the top five questions that you get every single time at the beginning of the sales process? What about the middle of the sales process? So this is great content, so now your salespeople can explain and showcase the people and your processes without even saying a word. Uh, what products and services drive the most business that you want to maintain a market leadership in? Or contrary, what products and services do you want to sell more of, right? And this might go to some of the other marketing investments that you're making uh, in industry segments, product launches, uh, other types of um, you know, focal points of your sales and marketing process. So let's jump in just to a couple case studies here. Uh, the first one is from a company called AMC Health, and they do telemedicine. So on the on the right upper right image, you see a girl holding all these different medical devices. So this company not only does the medical devices that are connected to the internet, but they do all the HIPAA compliant software that a doctor can actually do something similar to a Skype conversation with a patient and go through these different protocols that they have set up. Um, 
they were trying to get into Pfizer uh, and, and, and try to get this software into protocols for clinical trials. Very, very long lead time in terms of making a sale. But what they didn't realize is that the video that they gave to the outer layer of the Pfizer team was used as that, that outer team, the decision making process went to the inner team and a third inner team. Uh, so they got to the table not with paper, which traditionally was used by these outer teams to explain their product and service. So you have somebody that really doesn't have a tremendous knowledge about the product and service that this company is offer, standing up and making a presentation to their team, maybe, maybe not doing it justice. So in this case, basically what this person did is showed the video to the entire team. Everybody got it, and then AMC Health kind of went through that, that decision-making process. All right, next case study is utilizing thought leadership emails. This is a CPA firm called Burden, which is actually where I'm at today. Uh, we're shooting our sixth project over the last uh, three years with them. So every six months, they do about seven to 10 videos of their partners talking about uh, different tax accounting items, tips, just providing that personal touch of information to their subscribers. And this is really going into how video works into your, your marketing workflow, right? They didn't just shoot videos and then throw them in. They're actually planning for it. So they have a list of topics over the next three to six months that they're going to blog about, that they're going to talk about, things that might have been in the news recently, that when we come in, we are supporting that communication flow and then they're integrating this into their communications. The, the image on the left you'll see coming soon is actually foreshadowing exactly the video that is going to be in the next email, which is the one on the right. And uh, as the title says here, they are doubling and tripling their click-through and open rates. Doubling when it's a generic email uh, and tripling when it's something that's very focused on one of their target audiences, specifically in the legal industry, uh, accountants and lawyers have a very strong relationship, so a large percentage of their uh, email marketing news list is dedicated to lawyers. So they've carved out some of the time that we shoot video for them to speak directly to that particular audience. And then finally, they also put this on their homepage. So this is uh, on the right there, you see Jennifer Prosperino. This is one of their videos that they have. Um, let me also jump back here uh, because they, let's see, here. yeah, on the, on the right, the image on the right, you'll see it says burden two minutes on, right? This is something that we did way back in the very beginning. We, we coined this initiative called two minutes on. So in their emails, when they send out their email campaign, it's not an e-advisor that you see on the left, but it's a two minutes on. So now their subscriber base knows when they see two minutes on in the email subject line, they know it's going to be a video. All right, so this is a small family-owned business, third generation, energy company in Brooklyn and they came to us said well we need to do a video because my web company says that videos help support search engine optimization and I said you're absolutely right but when you're making a sales call do you ever make one phone call do you do one blog post do you send out one email newsletter the answer was no so we came up with an approach where we use their allotted budget, to, instead of getting that one video, we ended up getting 20 different videos. And you'll see on the bottom left, that's Jeff, he's the owner of a company. We actually did three locations at his office and warehouse, and we answered some of the common questions that people had. If I convert to gas, how long is my payback? Can I get sick from carbon monoxide? Which is a better burning fuel? Is 
gas cleaner than oil. These were very easy things for him and one of his guys, Johnny, to answer on camera because these are some of the questions they ask every single day in their life. They supported their search engine optimization efforts because now instead of one video on one page, we were able to get 20 videos on 20 separate pages that their web company used to keyword and put all the meta tags in and to drive traffic. And finally, a startup. So this is a company called Voila Chocolat. They didn't even have a company. They were out on the VC market making their sales presentations for six months, really not getting anywhere because they had a new concept that people didn't quite understand. And I think many organizations have that problem, especially if you're selling technology. Technology is always new, and you're always having to explain new technology. So what we did is we worked with them, and we created a kind of, a, a, we staged a whole chocolate making, high-end chocolate making experience with some of their friends and families and we packaged that to create what he wanted the money for. Four months after the video got into uh, the hands of Peter, he ended up getting about $500,000 in startup funding because he was able to explain his entire concept in a minute and 27 seconds without saying a word. He looked around, everybody was smiling, and what he said, great, let's turn to page 14 of the business plan and let's talk about the finances. And this is a picture of his store in New York City. It's on 79th and Columbus between, no sorry, 79th between Broadway and Amsterdam and you can go and have an experience and make your own high-end chocolates. So two more slides here of why you should get started today or why you should continue. Business video is a great cost-effective marketing tool. Although you'll make the investment today, you can literally amortize that across multiple years, across multiple distribution channels. And basically, you're going to get ahead of your competition. Because today, as that chart stated, we're still in the early stages of video. So thank you very much. I'm going to pass this back over to Michael. And um, if you'd like, this is our... YouTube channel, please subscribe and check out some of the 240 videos out of the 500 that we've done over the last couple of years. Thanks, Robert. Um, we, you've had so much great content. We really appreciate it. Um, I don't think we're going to have time for questions today, but uh, if you've typed a question into the GoToWebinar field, we will follow up with Robert and get those questions answered. Um, and uh, I'd also like to re announce the release of Outside In Marketing, my new book with co-author James Mathewson. Use big data to see what's going on outside your company to decide what messaging to produce inside your company. That's Outside In Marketing. So don't settle for average marketing. Don't put more Me Too content out there. And don't bore your customers. Instead, use all the data around you to find your voice, the unique voice that the right customers are waiting to hear. That's the promise of Outside In Marketing. For more info and to get 35% off, visit bit.ly slash outside in marketing. Um, we need to thank our sponsors once again. Barn Razors, a full-service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. Gagalamp empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalamp for free today. Garris Corp, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. Multivision Digital, if it's important enough to be on paper, then it should be on video. Um, that's all the time we have for today. I'd really like to thank Robert, not only for all these great ideas, as we usually do, but also for figuring out a way to do a, a webinar on video without us being able to show any of his videos. <laughs> so, and thanks especially to our audience for your participation and your questions. If you did have a question that you did not enter into the interface and you want it to send it to us, we'll get it to Robert if you email your question to Eileen at MikeMoran.com and we'll make sure Robert answers for you. 
Later this week, we'll send you all a link to the recording of this webinar to listen to again and to share with others. We also invite you to mark your calendars for our next Biznology webinar, Speed Up Your Sales with Scientifically Proven Writing Tips with Heather Lloyd Martin, scheduled for 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time on May 17th. We hope to see you all back then. Bye, everybody.